mate. Let's just lob this out on the table right from the get go, right? This is an opinion piece. It's a talking head piece, nothing more, nothing less. I'm gonna be jumping the gun on a lot of points, throwing out a lot of speculation, a lot of which many people are probably gonna disagree with, which is absolutely fine, absolutely fine, mate. If you disagree with me, that's okay. By all means, let me know, but please do keep it respectful. All right, so since day dot, me personally, I've always been a steadfast advocate for putting just enterprise grade professional workstation systems into a business environment documented all across my channel since day one. And I've never ever budged from that stance, not once. Your Autodesk customer, for example, paying a lot more for a professional focus mobile workstation or a desktop has always come with a bit of a, let's call it a slight performance hit. But I've always said, I, I, I personally don't care about the performance hit, right? Because the ISV support, the professional drivers, the business support features that you get with pro workstations. Not just that though, but also from a selfish point of view is the guy responsible for being accountable for the purchasing decisions. Should anything cause any production downtime, right? Like anything goes pop. I know that I always chose the system with the highest both perceived and certified reliability for a business. So if anything did break, I couldn't personally be blamed for supplying subpar quality. I mean, that was all well and good. And Peachy, through the last few years, not, not more so than last year's 11th Gen Mobile professional workstations, which were as good as the pro ones, were as good as, uh, sometimes better actually, than the gaming-based counterparts of almost all professional workflows that aren't, arbitra that aren't arbitrarily locked into using certified drivers. Let's just be clear here. Some programs will artificially slow themselves down if they detect something like a GeForce product, right? It's not that the pro hardware and pro drivers make programs run faster, they're just throttled down if the pro drivers aren't there, which is probably sucky. So what's changed for me? Why am I doing this? Well, it's becoming apparently clear that we're entering into an era where PC and laptop parts are now demanding, frankly, mate, they need an outrageous amount of power input so that they can operate at the level of performance that the respective parts are capable of. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't necessarily all a new trend, right? Historically, most parts in a professional workstation have always been dialed back somewhat, right? Take the desktop GeForce 3070 Ti and the professional RTX A4000 desktop graphics card, for example. Look at these specs here, mate. They're exactly the same. Same silicon, same GA104 product, same number of CUDA cores, RT cores, Tensor cores. It's literally exactly the same identical graphics processor in both products. But then look at the set clock frequencies and the TDP, mate. This has been the case for a long time. Now, when we look at the CPU though, mate, things were always somewhat closer than that and a different story begins to unfold. Take last generation again, for example, the top tier gaming grade mobile i9 was the 11980HK that you found in a lot of gaming laptops. The professional identical equivalent of that CPU was the Xeon W11955M. They were exactly the same. One was a Xeon, one was a Core i9. We both had very conservative power limits of around 45 to 65 watts, but most vendors removed those power limits and let them run up to around 100 watts in both the gaming and the professional laptops, which resulted in very similar performance across single and multi-threaded workloads. And that was fine because a CPU pulling 100 watts isn't really all that big of a deal, especially in 17 inch units. And when paired with a top tier GPU, in fact, because there was always just enough headroom for power delivery from the, they usually get 230 or 240 watt power supplies in mobile workstations. And the heat that's dissipated out from 100 watts should be sufficiently dealt with by the cooling layouts deployed in those larger traditional laptop body types that we've seen for a long time. But mate, that was last year and the world moves on. This year, we don't have mobile Xeon anymore. The new generation of mobile workstation CPU is literally the, it is the desktop Intel Core products positioned into a laptop. So basically, mate, in one generation, we've gone from factory spec numbers looking like this, numbers that are looking like this. That's what today's mobile workstations need to deliver in terms of power to achieve the expected performance levels of the latest platform. And as I showed with Dell's latest flagship 17-inch Precision 7770, they, they appear to just be not, either not capable or willing to cater for this. Dell were delivering around 120 watts instead 
of 157, averaging out at around 80 to 90 watts under full load, far from the demands or the capabilities of the i9-12950HX. And when you combine that with an even smaller laptop chassis than last year, the same 240 watt power supply as last year, well, the end result, uh, mate, it's a severe case of thermal throttling, huge lowering of clock speeds from the i9's potential, all resulting in a massive deficit in potential performance. But I just want to be crystal clear on this. I'm not picking on Dell because Dell's Dell. I'm only using these as an example because that's the only unit that I've seen so far from a professional mobile workstation. But when you look at the likes of the HP Fury G9 and the Lenovo ThinkPad P16, well, they're both fitted with the same i9 and they both also chose to use a 230 or a 240 watt power supply and chose to retain the same traditional chassis layout as the previous models. They may have done something different with the cooling, I don't think it would have worked very well, but that's just part of the speculation here. And then you've got the likes of, I'm, again, I'm not picking on these guys in particular, it's just the first article that I came across, but AEC Magazine, for example, when they did their look at the new Core HX processors in a ThinkPad, and they reported that the new generation of CPUs only have a 10 watt increase from last year. <laughs> no, mate, <laughs> no. No, they didn't. And you don't completely redesign the thermal layout for just 10 watts in a mobile workstation. It's no 10 watt increase. If you're putting a 12950HX into a laptop, you need to design it around the 157 watt turbo power limit. And you also need to consider the other side of the coin as well, the gaming laptops. We're back to having the same CPU now used across all systems, both gaming laptops and mobile workstations. They're gonna both be sharing the same Core HX processor family as seen with the likes of the Asus ROG Strix Scar SC, the MSI GT77 Titan, they're all using this Core platform as well as the mobile workstations. And you see, the thing is, mate, they are delivering the right amount of power to these new parts. They are flexing and adapting to this new paradigm. And the end result, for me, it, it basically changes the conversation entirely now, especially so when you consider the new stealthy, more business-like aesthetic going on here with the GT77 Titan, and the fact that these things are deathly silent as well when you're doing anything other than heavy sustained workload, these things are becoming more appealing in a business setting. But sure, right back in, let's say, the eighth generation mobile era, when both gaming and pro laptops again shared the same core CPUs, this was all before Mare Mobile Xeon began its very short life. There was always a slight difference in performance between gaming and pro, but, that ISV support, those pro drivers, right? The business support, that was enough of an incentive to look past that slight deficit that the pro units had. Now though, I'm not so sure it is, mate. And believe me, it's as someone who's stubbornly towed this line for basically ever, this is quite the shift. And that's because the performance deficit, mate, could now potentially be deal breaking. Okay, we're not talking about overclocking here, right? Or going beyond factory limits. We're talking about one SKU being able to meet the new demands and the other choosing not to. The gaming units weren't adopting this new Core HX platform at all, then, I don't know, maybe the argument just, or the dilemma wouldn't exist, but they are. And it's like, right, it's a bit of an odd analogy, but it's like eating margarita pizza for your entire life, thinking that's the only pizza there is, that's all there is. You're fine with it because you don't know any different. Tastes decent enough, and you're quite content with margarita, because that's all you've ever had. Then all of a sudden, someone comes along, slaps you in the face with Domino's menu, and now you realize you could be having a cheeseburger pizza or a camembert pizza. And now you're thinking, hang on a minute, why, 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 why am I only being given a margarita pizza here when I could be enjoying the impossible godfather? It'd be a bit of a nod, I know what I'm getting at. The point being, <laughs> the point being, why settle for less when the option for much more or the same, or in some cases a lower price, is a very real thing. I'm not talking here about small margins either. The Core HX i9, for example, should be capable of achieving 22,500 points in a basic Cinebench R23 run. That's in the GT77 Titan with the appropriate power delivery and a chassis designed for the 157 watts of max power draw, but in a smaller chassis designed around older gen processors with only a 240 watt power supply for the entire system. The end result, this is from the Dell, is around 13,000 to 16,000 with the exact same CPU. That kind of deviation can't be ignored. Same goes for real world productivity tests. We got around 68,000 points in Infomark during a validated run uh, during the Intel Vision event with that MSI GT77 Titan unit, whereas the Pro Mobile Workstation, and it's a Dell, it's the only one I've got, but using the same CPU was in the high 50Ks. So to put that into context, mate, it's around roughly a 15% loss in performance at mostly single-threaded workflows and up to around a 70% deficit 
and multi-threaded performance on the same CPU between gaming and pro. Again, mate, the MSI unit is running no XMP profile on the same DDR5 as the Pro Workstation. Both have got 3080 Ti graphics card and PCI Express Gen 4 storage. So they're as close to like for like as you can get really between gaming and pro. So just to somewhat wrap this up, mate, and give, I guess, a bit of a conclusion, it's got to be said again, right? Gaming units have always been slightly clocked higher, higher power delivery, higher temperatures and all that than the Pro Workstations, but deficit between them has always been pretty minimal in terms of end performance. Enough to look past and take the option of those ISV certifications and the reliability, etc., as a compromise. When the Pro Workstations are now potentially, and I, I can't speak for them all how they'll be in the future, but if, if, they are going to now be delivering the absolute minimum power on, on the configurable scale that's available. Like we're seeing Dell supplying only 125 watts to the 3080 Ti, whereas MSI pushing 175 watts, mate. If that's the trend moving forwards for professional workstations. And we're seeing gaming units miles out ahead in performance. Mate, for me, the decision is easy. Personally, I, I can't advocate for a 10 grand mobile workstation, which performs double digit percentages lower than a gaming unit with pretty much the exact same spec, much less cost. Now, unfortunately for some, you're probably gonna have no choice in the matter, right? Your applications are gonna be forcing you into going with ISV certified hardware, so the choice is pretty much made for you, but just do your research on that. There's a chance you might have been conditioned into thinking that you have to go for pro hardware, in fact, actually gaming hardware might do for you. I take Autodesk software, for example, Revit, AutoCAD, Fusion 360, Max Maya, none of these applications need or even benefit in Excel performance-wise in any way from pro hardware. There's hundreds of promo workstations on my Invmark leaderboard, for example. But look at this. The Asus ROG laptop, MSI, and Alienware all make up the top five. You're using VRED or even Max or Maya, for example. Maybe you need the larger VRAM size that you get with the highest tier pro workstations. But even then, mate, those pro GPUs, A5500s, desktop A6000s, they don't run faster than the equivalent gaming cards. Fact of anything, mate, day in and day out, daily stuff that you're doing, probably gonna run slower. Now, to my knowledge, the Pro Graphics drivers as well, they're not optimized for specific Pro applications in the same way that GeForce drivers are for certain games. The ISV certification, for example, it's a very, very, uh, constressed, it's a basic validation test that certifies a driver won't crash if the application is run and there's no weird glitches or bugs. But even then, mate, as I showed with how AMD was getting on with their GPUs this, not even this generation, for a long time, often the ISV test can overlook or miss some big issues. So it isn't always what it seems. And on a final note, so far my talking points have been pretty much limited to mobile workstations. I haven't tested a desktop workstation from a tier one vendor yet on 12th gen, but I don't think they exist. I think 12th gen i9 Intel desktop processors, well, they're rated around 240 watts peak power draw. With that, imagine 240 watts on the CPU in a tier one Dell Lenovo HP desktop. There's no way you can get away with the traditional bare bones air coolers, the likes of what we're used to seeing. So like I said, at the moment, I don't think we've had a Xeon equivalent on the desktop, the 12th gen hybrid Alder Lake. I think that's likely to come with Sapphire Rapids, but when it does come, I just don't think this is gonna cut it anymore. There needs to be a drastic redesign there as well. So there you go, mate. At the end of the day, it's up to you, but I'll be keeping an eye on how this all unfolds, how the deficit does as future generation workstations hit the market still value or even need that ISV support. That's absolutely fine, mate. There's nothing wrong with it. The point of talking about this in the way that I have was just to point out that for me, at least, conversation has changed and isn't quite as cut and dry as it always used to be. Links in the description where possible for the units mentioned here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Doodles.